Today, I want to talk about the future of IBD management. Not treatments today, but monitoring techniques and moving beyond standard techniques based on symptoms, blood and fecal biomarkers, imaging tools, and endoscopy. But to think about how new smart technologies, artificial intelligence, and digital telemonitoring can come together to give us a frictionless, passive monitoring tool that allows patients to get on with their lives, but be reassured that they will be warned at the earliest hint of a flare so that they can perhaps modify behaviors or indeed go on to optimize therapeutic regimes so that we can keep them in a deep remission. At DDW this week, there were four technologies to focus in on. Wearables, sweat patches, artificial intelligence using GTPs, and yes, robot pills. Wearables, I think, are something that are entering the mainstream. Many of us use devices such as a GPS watch, like my Garmin for when I'm out running in the hills, my Whoop band, which I use to passively monitor my resting heart rate, my heart rate variability, my sleep, my strain, etc. Others like a, an Aura ring, a device very much like the Whoop that you wear, like a ring, Apple Watches, Fitbits, to name but a few. One very interesting presentation at DDW looked at heart rate variability as a monitor of IBD-related activity. This looks very promising indeed, actually, although I do have some reservations in its current state. Heart rate variability is heavily impacted on environmental influences like alcohol, like poor sleep, like suboptimal diet, travel, etc. And so certainly from my experiments with my WHOOP over the last four years, those I think would trump any early signs of entering a flare state with IBD. Although the authors of this publication suggested that if you look broader and if you even out those day-to-day -day averages, you could start to see over maybe it's a week or a couple of weeks, signs of an early flare state evolving. And indeed, I think that particular insight gives me hope that this is something to follow. More and more people are taking the opportunity to monitor sleep and heart rate for wellness-based strategies. And that, that, of course, means there's something simple we could tap into for monitoring IBD if that works. The second method requires added technology, and that's a sweat patch. A sweat patch that's geared up to monitor any number of cytokines that might be secreted into sweat, TNF-alpha or interleukin-6 to name two. And in the publication that we saw at DDW this year, I think the data are quite preliminary in this space. It does suggest that this is something with promise. These sweat patches last three or four days, so I think the use case needs some exploring. It could be interesting, for example, for someone in the acute stages of a flare, monitoring patients in the early days post-discharge from hospital, or indeed in the early days of a, of a clinical trial. But if your sweat patch only lasts four days or so, that's perhaps not the solution in the long term to that passive frictionless device. Having said that, I could think of one example. For example, if you have the wearable there you're on your watch telling you that your heart rate, your heart rate variability, your strain, whatever it is that's indicating the early signs of a flare, one thing you could then do is slap on the patch, see what that reads out over three or four days. But in that situation, wouldn't you maybe just do an at-home fecal calprotectin or a finger prick blood test? There's many tools for doing that now quite straightforwardly at home. And so maybe this is something that needs a little bit more thought. The chat GTPs that were being explored are in their infancy, and there are quite a few interesting regulatory and legal, I guess, even thoughts to go around this. The best use case I saw for chat GTPs was actually taking very large data sets of electronic health record notes, unsorted, unstructured data, and then using the G GTPs 
to phenotype the patients. And I can think of this as being a fantastic research tool. Imagine being able to go into pretty much any site with any EA and say, there are 5,000 patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Let's extract automatically disease location, disease behavior, treatments, start dates and, and stop dates, as well as other key phenotypes. We do this manually, locally. It's a very painstaking process. We do it very precisely in order to get as robust a phenotype as possible for our research studies. But I, an automated process here, I think, could really be a huge unlock for clinical research globally. Um, and so this is something to keep a close eye on. Just a word of warning, if you are using GTPs, you have to be absolutely clear what you are doing, what permissions you have, and whether or not you have a secure environment like some universities do, where you can use a GTP with patient data with all the relevant permissions, or if you are in a standard chat GTP type environment, where actually you must not upload patient data, even if it's completely anonymized, because you are then breaching all number of GDPR, HIPAA, patient confidentiality or, or, or compliance rules. And then the fourth thing, which I'm gonna put in the curiosity bucket, was a, a robot pill. Now, this maybe isn't a robot, but it is indeed a pill. It's a large pill, it's over three centimeters, and inside it has a mechanism that allows it, once tracked through into the small intestine, to adhere to the inside of the intestine. There's then a CO2 or equivalent cylinder that allows a micro needle to penetrate the bowel wall from the inside and then inject a precise dose of a medicine. The idea here is that you could replace, and that this is the precise example they used, an eight weekly ustekinumab injection with a daily large robot pill to inject the medicine from the inside. Now I think this is a problem that doesn't need solving. Most patients with, with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis that take an ustekinumab injection do so eight weekly with great compliance and very high tolerability. This is, most of the injections are to be honest, but this one is, is tolerated particularly well according to my patients. Now ideally, patients would like to take no medicine or we know they'd like to take a once a day tablet. That is the preference. But a three centimeter robot pill with a mechanism inside that is not 100% foolproof. Yeah, I'm not so sure. So there we are, four technologies, wearables. We've got sweat patches. We've got GTPs for phenotyping notes for research, and robot pills. It's a very interesting space. It's something we're very interested in locally, building a clinical decision support tool for patients with IVD based on dynamic longitudinal biomarker data, as well as at-home metabolomic and proteomic tests. So you can be sure I'll be coming back with more information on this space soon. But for the meantime, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe if not already, and I'll be back for more updates from DDW and the world of IBD soon. Thanks, goodbye.